What's going on everyone? Train Freak here and today we have a new industry that is on the layout. This is over in Hickory Ridge and so we're going to talk about um, why I built this building and the plans um, that it came to be and how I ended up giving it the color that it looks. This building is almost complete. Um, I got a little bit more detailing to do on it, but we'll go ahead and jump right in on talking about this building while our switcher here is dropping off some empty cars to be loaded. So stay tuned. All right, so this is a little bit different angle of the Budweiser Brewery. And I'm not 100% sure if I'm finished with this thing. I'm pretty sure they're, I'm gonna put a, probably do a little bit more weathering to it. Not sure, but let me go ahead and explain what all we got going on here. Now I did have to do a little bit of track changes as well. And that's because when I measured the depth, I didn't want to cut off that truck bay. And it made my building a little too long. So you can see down there, that was the original truck that came through. I was going to have another track to the left of it. And we were going to have a Y right here where this side would go to the beer cars. And this side would go to the vat for the, the grain to be unloaded. But uh, however the case, that did not work out. So what I ended up doing, instead of coming straight off of the double slip, uh, curved it backwards a little so that way um, the boxcar is close to it. It's got a little bit of space, not much. But um, I did some talking with Split Rock and he did say that, you know, I could have passed more gas down here. And for example, if these box cars were not to be picked up, but that tank car down there was to be picked up, then that's going to kind of make the switching operations a little tricky. Uh, meaning that whoever's operating, um, probably most likely myself, might have to pick up maybe one car but not both. And do some shuffling around and pick the tank car, you know, locomotive without the connect here. Shove down, pick the tank car, pull the whole thing back, put the locomo or the tank car somewhere, and then shove whatever cars need to come back here. So that that is a possibility. Um, but yeah, so I kind of had to do a little tweaking on the track changes. But what's going to be real nice with this, and I'll get into the building in just a second, where past more gas is going, and I'm going to kind of give that a facelift too. It's not going way down there, meaning that I'm going to use that whole corner for scenery. So it's going to be a good scenery break between Hickory Ridge here and Wiener over there. All right, so let's talk about the building. Uh, so this is the Walther's Tire Plant. Now, when I bought it, it was part of the uh, Ford, Ford uh, Motor Company series. And when I saw this, I was like, ooh, this would make a really good brewery, mainly because of this humongous vat right there. And, of course, I like the fact that you do have the water tower on the top. So this is the Walder's tire plant. And it's basically two pieces. You have this piece over here, and this piece is separate. So I could have the vat here, or I could move it up to there if I wanted to. Um, wasn't really a fan of this side so I thought it looked a little better kind of sitting like so. I kind of like the fact that you know the beer cars do go on the inside for loading. So and of course I put in a little extra spot um, because they could load up to three cars at a time and then they would have to manually move the cars with the uh, hand crank um, like they used to back in the day and then they'd hop up on the car and turn the brake wheel to stop the car 
Uh, same with the grain. It could take up to two, maybe. Well, I don't think I'll be able to get three because, I mean, that's kind of cutting it close right there. So two cars on the grain um, at a time should be fine. Um, but yeah, but beginning of operations, it would look like this. They would manually move the cars later. Um, which will probably look kind of like that there. It'd be broken um, because they're not going to be able to move two cars at a time. And then these here would look somewhat like um, that kind of at the end of an, you know, at the end of the day, once you cycle and you start the next day. Uh, so the building, let's talk about paint colors. Um, I used uh, apple barrel, brown oxide for the brick, and what I ended up doing was just a single paint, a single coat. I did not do multiple coats on it, and I didn't make the coats evenly because the bricks, I kind of wanted some transitioning on it. So that was the first paint I used there. Uh, the next color paint I ended up using, and I used this one quite a bit, was uh, Jet Black. And what ended up getting Jet Blacked was the, the window uh, frames. Um, all of the black you see here, including the two smokestacks. And I do got a little bit of touch up I need to do up there, and I didn't notice it till just a couple of minutes ago. Um, so quite a bit um, ended up getting Jack Black. Now the vat, I just used a matte black uh, Krylon um, paint on that because I mean it was pretty, you know, pretty bulky. So I just used it on that there. Uh, next color, let's see here. This is Folk Arts uh, Dove Gray. And what I ended up using on this one for was these little things here. There's one there, there's two up there, and I did the top of the water tower with that folk, uh, or the dove gray from folk art. Um, then, as far as the water tower itself, I used barn red. So that's the only thing that got barn red on it. And then the other paint that I ended up using is, and it's really hard to tell, but it's Folk Art Metallic Silver Sterling. And this is an acrylic paint. All of these are acrylics. And so that ended up being on the two smokestacks uh, on the bottom. I thought it would look really, really cool uh, for that type of effect. And then, of course, I went ahead and did a little bit of weathering. Uh, first thing I did was I took some uh, burnt umber. And I did, I did a dry brush technique on it. And what I ended up dry brushing was these little, I don't know if you call them vents or what. Um, I guess it would be like a quillic to today's, like what they call a whirly bird. But I also did it to the top of the water tire to kind of give that rust look to it. I mean, then the last color I used was Folk Arts Raw Umber. And the raw umber literally was a wash on the whole building. The concrete, the brick. Uh, the only thing I did not do the wash on was anything that was painted black. Um, the last thing I did, it's not hooked up yet. It'll eventually get there. But I installed a Budweiser animation uh, sign for Miller Engineering. So I thought this would be a really, really cool touch. Uh, for night scenes to have an animated sign, um, basically it's got the letter A in the background, you have the eagle, and the wings are flapping. So I thought that would be a really neat thing. And then this right here, this uh, Anheuser-Busch logo, and yes, I did research to find the correct logo for the time period. Um, that's actually just printed on copy paper. Um, this is what I call a... Uh, Jason Jensen technique um, because I seen it from him and then of course you know my friend Rick Bailey uh, also did it on some of his buildings and so I tried it myself I printed it off um, it's about uh, two to two two and a quarter two and a half inches tall um, and 
sanded the back of it down and uh, put a 50-50 mixture of Mod Podge and water on the back of it and slapped it on and that was after I painted it. And so to me, I mean, that's a really cool logo. Now I contemplated on either having it, you know, at a 45 degree angle. However, that bar would have been in the way. And I thought about putting it on the front, but I don't think it would have looked as good with the auger, you know, that's loading the vat from the box cars or the grain box cars. I just don't think that would have looked as good. So I put it there, but now that allows me to look at maybe finding a way I could put one of the um, Woodland Scenic spotlights um, either down here or maybe up on the roof to kind of pop up and shine on that logo at night. So that's something I am going to experiment with. Um, but yeah, this is, like I said, in my opinion, this is a really, really cool kit. Um, if you're trying to do like a brewery or if you're wanting to do the actual tire plant, I mean, that's cool too. Um, just the fact that it's just got that humongous vat and it looks so weird that it's actually going down in the building. So, but yeah, I thought this was a really neat piece. So this is what I've been working on. And now that I've got this finished, uh, for the most part, now I know where I can move past more gas. One of the things that I am contemplating on doing is the back wall that I did not use. If I have enough windows, that's going to be the kicker. If I have enough windows, um, because I did have to kind of do a little bit of a kit bash on this too. So I might not have enough windows on it. Um, I plan on putting that over here up against the backdrop to kind of make the building look a little bigger. Um, so, like I said, if I have enough windows, I will end up doing it. If not, um, not sure what I'm going to do. Maybe I can rob some windows from another kit that's very similar. So, that's kind of where I'm at uh, with this with this build. So, this is the Budweiser Brewery, or the start of it. And like I said, I do have... Some other things in mind as far as weathering and scenery goes, but I'm just not at that point on the layout uh, to do that. So that's going to be put on the back burner. And one of the other things I will have to try to figure out to, how to do is the wire that feeds the Budweiser. Um, I got to figure out how I am going to power it. Um, it comes with the connection for three AAA batteries. I do have an adapter that allows me to connect it to um, track power. So I might I might do the track power thing um, So and do it that way. So but yeah, other than that, that's all I've got as far as uh, the layout update for today is just the Budweiser Brewery. What I plan on working on next is working on the town of Wiener. Maybe find a way... We can get some roads in there. So I'm talking to Train Junkie, hoping that um, he can help me with some parallel parking or 30 degree parking for the city side and see if we can't maybe find a way to get Wiener uh, up to life and then figure out what I'm going to do over here in this corner. So, And another thing I do need to be working on is looking at Continuing the backdrop, which will probably most likely transition back into trees, like way over there, way over there. So it's going to transition back to the trees, and I will probably end up using that um, as my backdrop. So uh, other than that, that's pretty much it for today's update. So thank you for everyone who has subscribed. Hit that thumbs up. Uh, to help get my videos out to other people in YouTube land. And of course, if you like what you see, you know, of course, to subscribe again and fill in the bell because then you'll be notified on all of my future videos. So, uh, extended thank you to all of my Patreon members and my channel supporters. Um, Y'all are the ones who help keep this going and, you know, fund contests and stuff that I do from time to time as well. So, Huge thank you to all of you and whatnot. So other than that, y'all be safe out there. I hope y'all have a great week and happy railroading.